Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna go over the two different platforms, Notion and ClickUp, the main differences between them, and which one is better for content creation. Charlie and I have used both platforms for organizing and managing the production of hundreds of videos, and so hopefully this video will help you in your decision on which one to go with. They're both really good for different stages of your content creation business, so be sure to watch the entire video to know which one is best for your current situation. Okay, so here I am on my Notion page, and as you can see, I already have some stuff set up from previous Notion videos. We have a bunch of different tutorials on how to create employee dashboards, as well as a bunch of tips and tricks that you can use to save a ton of time when using these platforms. So if you guys are interested, we'll be leaving links down in the description below for you guys to check them out. But anyways, just to give you guys a quick little overview of how Notion works, you basically have the ability to create a new page from scratch using this button right here. And once I do that, I can add a title, I can add an icon, I can add a cover picture. So let's say I wanna change the cover picture to the color red. I can add a comment where I can link something or mention a person, page, or date. And there's a bunch of other things that you can do like import templates, create a table, board, timeline, calendar view and more. Now, if I go ahead and click onto templates right here, it's gonna show up with a bunch of different templates that I can use for different categories. So for example, they have a bunch of templates for product management, like one-on-one -on -one notes. And they also have different templates for let's say marketing. So for example, a content calendar. And if you guys wanna create one from scratch, then you guys can do that too. So usually what we like to do is use the board view. From here, you can create a new database and then call it content calendar. And then inside of this content calendar, you'd basically have your video ideas and then you'd separate them between these different statuses from an idea to scripting in progress to editing and then publish. This works the same way for creating content calendars for different platforms like Instagram and TikTok, right? So all you would have to do is just create another content calendar like this and just rename it to let's say TikTok content calendar. So right here, I just duplicated this content calendar right here. So let's say I named this one YouTube content calendar and I wanna go ahead and combine the two so that they're right next to each other. Well, all I would have to do is just create a new page and I can call this content calendars and then from here, I can drag the TikTok into there as well as the YouTube. Now from here, if I want to turn it into an inline, I can do that as well, which basically expands the content calendar and I can do the same for YouTube. And then if I want, I can drag the YouTube one above the TikTok one. And from here, you guys are probably gonna have a bunch of different ideas. I would click on the three dots right here and then limit the pages to about 10 to 25. That way you don't have a huge list of, you know, over 50 video ideas. And if you're creating content for over three platforms, you're probably just gonna wanna see the main stuff from each content calendar. Calendar. Now from here, another thing that you can do is if I turn it back into a page, I can make it actually go side by side. And then if I turn it back into an inline, then it'll turn it into a side by side board view. So let's just undo that. And let's say that I also want to make another one for Instagram. So I'll just go ahead and hold option and drag the TikTok one to make another one. And in here, I'll just go ahead and rename this to Instagram. And I'll just go ahead and drag this to the side of each one. So that is three columns. And then from here, I can click on the six dots again, and then turn them all into an inline. And then if I go ahead and click on the three dots in the top right hand corner and click on full width, that'll expand everything into the full page. And so I'll be able to look at the content calendars for each different platform on just one page. And this works for pretty much everything, right? Like if I wanted to, let's say, have this as the YouTube SOPs, I could just go ahead and drag this into the content calendars as well. And then you could see that it enters in right here. Now, another thing that you might wanna do on Notion is you might wanna create a homepage. So it would look something like this where you have your homepage with all the stuff that you need to look at in terms of your employees, life goals, monthly goals, and yearly goals, as well as anything else that would be important to show at the beginning of the day. That way you could start off your work day just by looking at your homepage so you can get a good overview of everything that's going on instead of having to click onto each different dashboard or content calendar to see what needs to be done in the business. Another thing that we used Notion for in the past was to create employee dashboards. So for example, I have one from a previous video that I did where as you can see, I just named it Joey's dashboard. So this would be my own. And this is a great tool for being able to organize all of your tasks and delegating them efficiently to each employee. And once you build out a bigger team, then you could just create a new page called team. And then you just have to drag each person's dashboard onto that team. And if I go ahead and duplicate it, I can create another one for Charlie's. And if I go back, you could see that it won't let me turn it into an inline. And that's because it's a separate custom page. It's not just a board view, right? So right here, I can type stuff underneath it. Whereas right here, if I go back to the content calendars, it wouldn't be able to 
type anything underneath these board views. So if you want to do that for your team dashboards, all you would have to do is just create an actual board view. And then right here, I'll just go to new database and then call it Joey's dashboard. And then from here, if I drag that onto the team and I go ahead and click on the six dots again, you'll see that now I can turn it into an inline. Then you'd basically do the same thing as what you did with the content calendars and just organize all of your team members under one Notion page. Now, a really cool thing that you can also do with Notion is create different views. So right here, you see that there's a board view going on right now, which is where you click and drag to change the status of the task. But I can also go ahead and click on the plus button right here and then add a new view, such as a table view, a timeline, a calendar, list, and there's just a ton of different views that you can add. So for example, if I add the calendar view right here, and let's say I go back to the board view and I make the card one assigned to tomorrow. That means if I click back out of that and I go back to the calendar, you'll see that on the calendar, the task is set up with the correct due date. So yeah, that's just a pretty basic view of what you can do on Notion in terms of building out a content creation business. But now let's move on to ClickUp. Now ClickUp can be a little bit more complex to learn compared to Notion, but it can be super useful and worth it to learn if you have a big team. This is because you could do everything that you can do on Notion, except you also are able to add automations. So you can see right here, I created a space for social media. And you can see here, I've already created a few folders, but let's just say I wanted to create another folder for TikTok. So I would just click on the plus button right here and then go over to folder. And then I'll just name this folder TikTok and then create the folder. From here, it basically starts off as a list view, but I can go ahead and also create a board view. So this is similar to what Notion does where you can drag them across. But with the list view, you're able to change the status by just clicking on the square right here and changing it to the different statuses. I won't go too much into detail about how to change these different statuses and how to build out a content calendar on ClickUp because we already have tutorials on the channel about that stuff. But something important that I did wanna go over was automations because if you have a bigger team, you probably wanna switch over to ClickUp because with these automations, you can save a ton of time and not have to worry about micromanaging everybody on your team. So for example, right, if we go onto our TikTok folder, we obviously have this list right here, which would be the content calendar. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rename this to TikTok content calendar. And from here, if I click on the automate button, I can go ahead and always assign the tasks to anybody on my team. So in this case, I'm the only person on this workspace. So I'll just go ahead and assign it to myself. And then I'll also add myself as a watcher, which basically means that anytime there's a change made inside of this list, I'm gonna get a notification on my ClickUp telling me what was changed. So if I just go ahead and create a test task, so I'm just gonna do TikTok idea one, you guys can see that it automatically assigned me to the task. And from here, if you wanna take it to the next level and make your content business a lot more efficient, then what I would recommend is actually creating a custom automation. So you just go back to the automation button and then click on add automation right here. And this is where you can start making when then actions. So let's just say for example, that if a status changes from being an idea to scripting in progress, then it's gonna change the assignees to the script writer. Then I can also add a comment and then I would be able to mention anybody on the team that was helping script out the video. And I would also be able to add it to their dashboard. So right here where it says add to list, I would just select their list from here. And the same goes for the rest of the process, right? So let's say I want it to go from whenever it's in scripting in progress and changes to post-production, then I'm gonna go ahead and add it to my editors list. And then I can also go ahead and add a comment and then mention the editor on the team to let them know that, hey, the video is now in the post-production process, which means that you are now in charge of that task. So yeah, as you guys can see, this thing can get really, really intricate and you can have a bunch of automations made for each step of the way. So if you guys see, it goes from ideas to scripting in progress, to filming, post-production, ready to publish, and then publish. So now that I've given you a brief overview of each of the different platforms, let's talk about some of the pros and cons. So with Notion, first off, you have that it's a great platform for everything, you know, both work and personal. It's a really well-known platform that most content creators use, and it's really easy to learn for beginners. So this is a good option for solo creators or creators with a small team where you can manage everything by yourself. But if you wanna do things like automations, then it would probably be better to switch over to ClickUp. We switched over to ClickUp last year, and it's been a game changer for our entire content creation process. It was a little bit harder to learn compared to Notion, but I would say that was definitely worth it, especially now that we have over eight people on the team working on different things at the same time. Automations like the ones that I showed you help out so much in the business and make things so much more efficient. That way, if you're managing a bunch of people on your team, you don't have to keep on checking in with them. And that way there's not as much micromanagement. So in conclusion, here's what I think. You really can't go wrong with either platform. And if you're just starting out with creating content, then I recommend using Notion 
and then moving on to ClickUp once you build out a big team. Now, when you decide to move from Notion to ClickUp, you can easily import your CSV files so that you can get all of your data from Notion onto ClickUp, which we have a tutorial on the channel that can teach you exactly how to do that. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful. And if it was, please be sure to leave a like so that this video can also reach out to other people who could benefit. This channel is dedicated to helping out newer entrepreneurs and content creators build out their systems and business. And if that sounds like something that you're interested in, please consider subscribing so that you can stay up to date with new videos every week. Anyways, that's it for now. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.